ಶಿಶಿ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ನೇಬರ್ಹುಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ಐ ತಿಂಕ್ ಶೀಸ್ ಕನೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ Yeah, I think she's probably joining in. Okay. Well, it's good to always increase the circle. Yeah. <laughs> so, we'll start with 13.4, Prabhuji, right? That's right. Tadakshetram yatya drukcha yadrupariyatashayat Yadrupariyatashayat Tadakshetramasena meshunu Now please hear my brief description of this field of activity and how it is constituted what its changes are when it's produced who that knower of the field of activities is and what this influences what his influences are So before before starting to read this purport I will uh, just mention one thing that uh, in the previous verse number 3 we were speaking about uh, the super soul and the soul the knower of all the bodies who is the super soul and the knower in each body who is the soul so that uh this is what we're expanding on from here is understanding and knowing who um is the knower uh within all bodies that's the super soul and who is the knower within the individual bodies that's the individual soul and what the field of activity is is the body okay the lord is describing the field of activities and the knower of the field of activities in their constitutional position so he's describing the body and the soul here one who has one who has to know uh, excuse me one has to know how this body is constituted the materials of which the this body is made under whose control this body is working how the changes are taking place where from the changes are coming what the causes are what the reasons are what the ultimate goal of the individual soul is and what is and what the actual form of the individual soul is one should also know the distinction between the individual living soul and the super soul the different influences their potentials etc when just has to understand this part of gita directly from the descriptions given by the supreme personality of god head and all these will be clarified but one should be careful not to consider the supreme personality of god head in everybody to be one with the individual soul the jiva this is something like equating the potent and the impotent questions comments so it's a technical verse but it's important to understand what uh, krishna is saying here he wants to make clear um who that we know the definition of the body and we know the definition of the soul and we want to and we want to know their constitutional positions and that constitutional position actually ultimately is that um we are spirit soul and the body is a temporary encasement of the soul in this conditioned world and then he lists a whole propad lists a whole bunch of things here uh how the body is constituted the materials of which the body is made 
under whose control the body is working, et cetera, et cetera. He goes to a lot of detail of understanding uh, what the body is, how it works. But the important point here is, is that we have to understand the distinction between the individual soul and the super soul. Because the super soul is the soul of all. He's the soul of every soul, of every body, of everything in this world. <laughs> and the Bhagavad Gita has to be understood um, being clarified by a guru coming in the line from Krishna, because otherwise, and here's what Prabhupada always is warning against, we can come, we can come to a conclusion which is a Mayavadi conclusion, which is that one should be careful not to consider the Supreme Personality of Godhead in every body to be one with the individual soul. And that's something like uh, equating the potent with the impotent. In other words, Krishna has all the power and we have no power. We cannot say that we're all powerful like God because we're not God and we never become God. But if we don't have a good guide into understanding this philosophy of Krishna consciousness, we can end up being guided by someone who is mistaking the super soul uh, and the individual soul and thinking they're one. Any other questions or thoughts? Well, this is really this, this, the central, central problem, the central question of, of spirituality is finding out who we are. And the uh, one of the comparisons I like to think that just used a lot is the, the idea of an octopus, where each individual tentacle thinks that it's an individual and is, is somehow has its own identity. And it bumps into other tentacles and it's oh, there's another. But ultimately, you know, their their connection is is that they're part of the same organism. They're not the a tentacle is not the organism, but a tentacle yeah, is that's important part of the organism. We and are part and parcel of Krishna, part and parcel, therefore, yeah. and therefore we, but we're but we're not the equal to Krishna. In this case, all the part the 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 whole is not the sum of all the parts. Krishna is beyond the all this. The, everything else added up together still doesn't equal Krishna because Krishna is eternally the. Supreme Lord, and we're eternally the, the dependent um, living entities. So that's a good point. A good point that uh, um, the, the, the octopus's legs better not think that they're the same as the octopus himself. Okay. Any other thoughts? Welcome to Shiva Ji and Saki Priya. Thank you for joining, Manish. Hare Krishna. Actually, actually, at the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita, in chapter two after the introduction, and the dilemma that Arjuna has to face, Krishna explains who we are. Mm -hmm. He explains very clearly that we're not the body, that we're the soul. There's so many verses in chapter two, where right from the start, we are supposed to be understanding that there is a difference between the body and the soul and they were not the body. That's something we wear, the body is something we wear. But we go past beyond that and we learn so many other things in the following chapters. But with that understanding from the very beginning as a base or the foundation of everything that's coming later in Bhagavad Gita. This is uh, just more deep, deeply describing the same things in the second chapter. Okay, I guess we can go to the next verse. Rishi Bhir Bahuda Gitai Chando Bhir Viridai Prathak Brahma Sutra Padas Chaiva E Tu Mad Bhir Vinesh Chitaihi That knowledge of the field of activities and of the knower of activities is described by various sages in various Vedic writings. It is specially presented in Vedant Sutra with all reasoning as to cause and effect. Her port, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the highest authority 
in explaining this knowledge. Still, as a matter of, of course, learned scholars and standard authorities always give evidence from previous authorities. Krishna is explaining this most controversial point regarding the duality and non-duality of the soul and the super soul by referring to a scripture, the Vedanta, which is accepted as authority. First, he says, this is according to different sages, as far as the sages are concerned, besides himself, Vyasadev, the author of the Vedanta Sutra, is a great sage, and in the Vedanta Sutra, duality is perfectly explained. And Vyasadev's father, Parasar, is also a great sage, and he writes in his books of religiosity, Aham Pam Chat Tathapnai. We, you, I, and the various other living entities are all transcendental, although in material bodies. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now we are fallen into the ways of the three modes of material nature according to our different karma. As such, some are on higher levels and some are in the lower nature. The higher and lower natures exist due to, the, due to ignorance and are being manifested in an infinite number of living entities. But the super soul, which is infallible, is uncontaminated by the three qualities of nature and is transcendental. Similarly, in the original Vedas, a distinction between the soul, the super soul, and the body is made, especially in the Katha Upanishad. There are many great sages who have explained this, and Parashar is considered principal among them. Hare Krishna. Hare sure. mm -hmm. Bill? Uh, <clears throat> the word Chandobihe refers to the various Vedic literatures. The Taittiriya Upanishad, for example, which is a branch of the Yajurveda, describes nature, the living entity, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As stated before, Kshetra is the field of activities, and there are two kinds of Kshetra Gya, the individual living entity and the Supreme Living Entity. As stated in the Taittiriya Upanishad, Ramapucham Patishta there is a manifestation of this Lord's supreme energy known as Anamaya, dependent on food for existence. This is a materialistic realization of the supreme. Then in Pranamaya, after realizing the supreme absolute truth in food, one can realize the absolute truth in the living symptoms or life forms. In Gyanamaya, realization extends beyond the living symptoms to the point of thinking, feeling, and willing. Then there is Brahman realization called Vigyanamaya, in which the living entity's mind and life symptoms are distinguished from the living entity himself. The next supreme stage is Anandamaya, realization of all blissful nature. Uh, thus, there are five stages of Brahmin, uh, Brahma real, uh, realization, which are called uh, Brahma, uh, Brahma Pancham. Out of this, the first three, Annamaya, Pranamaya, and Gyanamaya involve the field of fields of activities of the living entity. Transcendental to all these 
fields of the field of fields of activity in the supreme lord who is called uh, anandamaya the vedanta sutra also describe the supreme uh, su supreme by saying anandamaya uh, basyatah the supreme personality of godhead is by nature full uh, full of joy the enjoy to enjoy his transcendental bliss he expands to into uh, vigyan maya prana maya gyan maya and anna maya in the field of activities the living entity is considered to be the enjoyer and different from him is the ananda maya that means that if the living entity decides to enjoy without telling himself with the ananda maya then he becomes perfect this is the real picture of the supreme lord as the supreme knower of the field the living entity as the subordinate knower and the nature of the field of activities one has to search for this truth in the vedanta sutra or brahmins sutra karan it is mentioned here that the codes of the brahma sutra are very nicely arranged according to cause and effect some of the sutras or aphorisms are na vyat asrute natma srute and parat tu tach srute the first aphorism indicates the field of activities the second indicates the living entity and the third indicates the supreme lord the samam bonam among all the manifestations of various entities hari krishna hari krishna any questions comments so prabhu ji like uh, uh, so uh, here we are getting a description that uh, our body we know that it is uh, we have gross body and subtle body but the whole body can be described in five koshas annamaya kosh and all the concept of koshas is also coming here uh, can you little bit summarize it uh, more how they map to uh, gross body and subtle body well okay we'll we'll jump ahead to that since you've asked the question that's a good question um it's stated here that uh, the supreme lord it says that he actually if you go down to this one sentence here it says out of um he says um the vedanta sutra also describes the supreme by saying uh no actually farther down he expands himself uh to enjoy trans his transcendental bliss he expands himself into vigyanamaya pranamaya gyanamaya ananamaya and but the highest is ananda maya and he, that is bliss the bliss of 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 personal um relationship with the soul with the souls with krishna ananda uh, ananda maya vyasa so these are different the the, the first anamaya that's obtain uh, that seeing god in food and then pranamaya seeing the life the, the life force in bodies as 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 the force of god and then uh gyanamaya is to see psychological effects and and thinking and uh, and uh and uh intellectual pursuits all these three are material consciousness you know someone is just in the eating and they'll think thank god for food and someone else is thinking Oh thank god I'm alive and I've got a nice family it's pranamaya and another person is thinking how wonderful god is he's given me such a great brain so that I can think and and speculate so these you know people may believe in god and have a connection but that's all material the only two that are uh, that are transcendental first is um vigyanamaya because that's a realization of um brahman and it's very interesting how prophet states this here um then there is brahman realization called vigyaya vigyanamaya in which the living entity's mind and life symptoms 
like my body and my mind are distinguished from the living entity himself. People at this point know they're not the body and they know they're the spirit soul and they've got this mind and body. So they have a certain amount of bliss knowing that I'm not really a part of this world. But the next in the supreme stage is Anandamaya, which is realization of the all blissful nature and the all blissful nature is the spiritual world and our relationship with Krishna and the spiritual world. So these are the, these are the different ways in which persons may um, progress or see God. The lowest level is, is very gross. It's just like, I want to eat. Basic subsistence. It's basic subsistence, yes. Actually, this one thing, one thing is said, actually, we all know a classical example, actually, when there's a baby which has no knowledge at the very lowest level of pursuit of knowledge, they are always conscious of food. They always want to eat. Uh, that's, it is always compared. The children, uh, growing small children, they, that is what they call Annamaya. Yes. Yes. Because that's what they can, uh, they can think about. Or that's what they enjoy. Beyond that, they don't know anything. Right. Means a grown-up person may think about some in a, as the intelligence that the body grows, intelligence goes, someone may be a little bit intelligent to think a little bit beyond, but as that's how it is progress. But the children, younger children, they are absolutely annamaya. That's what they are always told, always described yeah. as. That's, that's a good point because they're the perfect example. But all three, whether it's anamaya, uh, pranamaya or pranamaya, yeah. it's all yes. material at one level. Yes. It never ever uh, it, it gives one an understanding of one's true position. Uh, yes. That is not the body, I'm not the body, and that I have an eternal um, identity beyond this temporary bodily consciousness. I, I haven't had supper yet, so guess which level I'm at. Yeah, well, anamoya can be enjoyed by everybody, but don't stay there. <laughs> because we have to move on to the point, I mean, oh, again. We, we ultimately have to have the knowledge that we're not this body in this world. So. This is not our place. Um, if we go to the beginning of the, of, the, of the verse itself, if you look at the verse, pra, um, Krishna actually wants to make a point here that this knowledge of the field of activities and of the norm of, uh, of activities is described in, by various sages and various Vedic writings. He wants to make the point that even though he's Krishna, he's God, and he is perfectly capable of telling people anything because he knows everything, that we really um, always refer to the previous authorities in order to make our points. Um, it's sort of like a lawyer, he's making a point in a court uh, and the judge will ask him, well, what is the precedent? What, are the, what does the law say? And he has to refer to the previous law in order to make his point. He can't just make something up because he thinks it's right. So here Krishna is saying that uh, still as a matter of, the prophet saying, still as a matter of course, learned scholars and standard authorities always give evidence from previous authorities. So this is what it's being said by all the sages that there is this particular nature uh, in which we understand ultimately that the soul is limited to mm -hmm. consciousness of the body and that the super soul has consciousness of all bodies, but that the conditioned soul really is limited to thinking that the body and, the, and he is the body, whereas the persons who become uh, self-realized or understand their uh, real transcendental nature they can understand that this body is just a temporary identity. Questions? Uh, so Prabhuji, what is the uh, duality and non-duality of the soul? What does it mean? Oh, good point. So, the, yeah, it's, we're, it, we're speaking here of like uh, achinta beta beta tattva, that the soul, is always individual, separate from Krishna. But the soul also is always part and parcel of Krishna. In other words, same, it, it, uh, same qualities uh, as God, but not the same qu 
quantity. And this is an important point because in, in Western religions, there is this understanding that the souls of this world are really quite literally cut off completely from God by, and it's true, we're cut off from Krishna because of our desire to enjoy the material world. But theirs is more existential in which it really is that the souls are just, and they only think souls are in humans, but the soul is completely, it doesn't have any qualities of God. It's separate, separate. whereas we know it's, we're separate, but not like the Maya bodies, we don't think, oh, we're all one. We're separate, but we have the qualities of God. Uh, it's described that Krishna has 64 qualities and in full, and that the living entities, we have 50 of those qualities in small amount. But we are also, in our constitutional position, sat, chit, and ananda, we're full of knowledge, we're, we're eternal, full of knowledge, and bliss. And uh, an another point to illustrate the, the answer to the question is that uh, if we see that the composite, chemical composition of the drop of water in the ocean is the same as the ocean, that's, that is the non-duality. But the actual duality is that there is a difference between the drop and the ocean. So that's what's being des described here. So the chemical composition, the nature of the quality of existence of the living entity is the same as Krishna's. And yet we're separate and we're individuals. So there's the unity and diversity at the mm -hmm. same time. Sometimes also said the fire and the spark. Yeah. So you're sitting on the beach and there's a big bonfire and these sparks are flying up and down. And as long as they stay in the fire, they stay nice and hot and bright. Occasionally they may even land on your leg and boy, do they hurt. But if they fly over your head and onto the cold beach, they just go out. And the only way to get them bright again is to pick them up and throw them back in the fire. That's predicament. That's our predicament. Our predicament is we flew out of the fire and we've just basically and think we are, we're gone out. We are in the kingdom of Maya. We have to go back to the, the, the kingdom of the Supreme Lord because that is our nature. Our mm -hmm. nature is spiritual. So Gurudev, our guru, Prabhupada, um, he leads us through the process of Krishna consciousness back into the fire of Krishna consciousness. And how do we do that? By chanting the Maya Mantra, by going to kirtans, by hearing philosophy, by tasting prasadam, by having, by having Zoom discussions, by, um, by, by associating with the energy of Krishna consciousness, which is in, for, in this form of, uh, of the activities that we make our life surround. And through sound. Yeah, and through sound, ultimately through sound. Hearing about Krishna. And chanting about Krishna. Hare Krishna, yes. Krishna. <laughs> also, I think in terms of physics, also also the matter, actually energy is generated out of matter, but that energy and matter, these two are different things, but they are also related. So in one sense, yeah, so that's one kind of, also that example of duality and non-duality, you know, so matter yeah, yeah. and energy. Like a wave, wave comes, wave, wave, energy wave. travels through wave as well as particles. So that, right. again, so many examples also in science on the same lines. And as Mataji gave an example of example of a, a drop of water versus body of ocean, body of water qualitatively same. So there's so many ways to understand dual and non-dual. Right. And we have to always understand that the yeah. drop may have the qualities of the ocean. Yes. Drop yes. Drop. Yes. It's an infinitesimal. Yeah, just a very, very in, uh, a minute uh, yes. example. Yes. Any other thoughts, questions? This is a very important verse. I think we can get to six and seven. Mahabhutanayankaro Buddhir Avyakta me vaja Indriyani the Shankancha Panchai Chendriya Gochara Ichadvesha Sukhandukham 
The five great elements, false ego, intelligence, the unmanifested, the ten senses and the mind, the five senses, objects, desire, hatred, happiness, distress, the aggregate, the life symptoms, the and conventions, convictions, all these are considered in summary to be the field of activities and its interactions. The body is such an this, is the, this is the body and its interactions, and this is knowledge of material knowledge about the body and what the body does in this world. So this would be considered like psychology, sociology, all the kind of studies of this world, not to do with anything transcendental at all. Okay. Shiva? Sure. From all the authoritative statements of the great sages, the Vedic hymns and the aphorisms of the Vedanta Sutra, the components of this world can be understood as follows. First, there are earth, water, fire, air, and ether. These are the five great elements, Mahabhuta. Then there are false ego, intelligence, and the un unmanifested stage of the three modes of nature. Then there are five senses for acquiring knowledge, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin. Then five working senses, voice, legs, hands, anus, and genitals. Then above the senses, there is the mind, which is within and which can be called the sense within. Hare Krishna. Jyoti? Therefore, including the mind, there are 11 senses altogether. Then there are the five objects of the senses, smell, taste, form, touch, and sound. Now the aggregate of these 24 elements is called the field of activity. If one makes an analytical study of these 24 subjects, then he can very well understand the field of activity. Then there are desire, hatred, happiness, and distress, which are interactions, representations of the five great elements in the gross body. The living symptoms represented by Consciousness and convictions are the manifestation of the subtle body, mind, ego, and intelligence. These subtle elements are included within the field of activities. One who desires no, no, I think the five great elements. The five, the five great elements. The, the yeah, the, yeah, the five great elements are a gross representation of the false ego, which in turn represents the primal stage of false ego, technically called the materialistic conception or tamas buddhi, intelligence in ignorance. This further represents the unmanifested stage of the three modes of material nature. The un unmanifested modes of material nature are called pradhana. One who desires to know the 24 elements in detail along with their interactions should so study the philosophy in more detail in Bhagavad Gita, a summary only is given. Okay, that's good. Uh, the body is the representation of all these factors, and there are changes of body, uh, changes of body, which are six in number. The body is born; it grows; it stays; it produces by uh, product. 
it produces byproducts and then it begins to de uh, decay and then and, and at the last stage it vanished therefore the field is non permanent material things however the kshetra uh, gnan the knower of the field is proper its uh, its proprietor is different what's the difference between the proprietor and the knower uh, and the proprietor and the field the soul and the body field is temporary finished yes whereas proprietor stays forever right the proprietor is the soul forever and the and the and the and the, the, the field of activity is, is is temporary now how much a person is That's in ignorance right. by thinking i am this body and then everything's finished at death it's just yeah. gross. That's why it's called um, Thomas Abudi, intelligence and ignorance. When we're in the material world, we have this materialistic conception, which is ignorant because we have a, a su such a limited understanding of what we are. We think we're a you know a bag of senses, and and uh, and uh, you know uh, um, hormones and uh, and electrical impulses, and it's all kind of just you. Know, cruising along until it gets sick and dies. This is very, very ignorant, but this is the standard, without transcendental knowledge, this is what the default consciousness in the material world is. But I need to point out that, uh, that all the divisions, the five elements, the senses and all these things, yeah, he's talking about the, the 2000 year old tradition. Yes, of it course. Is, it has not, survived to this day i mean we we know now what what the real elements are real chemical yeah, well, elements it isn't just the general elements right for our, well, philosoph our philosophical understanding but you know we do have elements that are earth uh, earth elements and the elements that are air elements and elements that are liquid elements and they're we not really well but, well but in general this is i mean this is what the greeks said too I mean, this is the Greeks, yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and Aristotle and, yeah. and so forth. But uh, and Aristotle's teachings lasted for fifteen hundred years at this, which is no small accomplishment. But you know, it's uh, when we really looked at what fire is, it's not an element; it's just it's chemical reactions. Well, but, is, the point, but the point is, is well, we're talking about different yeah. elements yeah. in the world, and so what we're we're trying to understand this is actually. This list of 24 elements is a kind of yoga called Sankhya Yoga, in which we analyze the material world and try to understand how we, the soul, aren't these things. So we could expand it into like modern physics also. So we're not the 100 and- There's no discrepancy. So we're not the, what, how many elements are there now, Bill? Well, 118 that we've actually made in the lab. Uh, yeah. you know, we've extended past 92, which yeah. is the natural elements. But uh, so whether you is whether it's natural or made in the lab, we could understand that the 118 <laughs> elements have so, nothing to do with transcendental nature. They have to do only with the material nature. So yeah. we can examine them okay. and we'll find out right. more about the material nature. Yeah. And those are probably only the art elements. Yeah. So do they just that's just by chemistry periodic table. That's the basic material understanding. In fact, the five elements here, the word Bhagwan has the roots in all these five elements, like Bha is Bhumi, which is earth, Ag is Agni, which is fire, then Vayu is air, then A is Akash, which is ether, and water is Neer. So the word Bhagwan encapsulates all these five elements actually in that sense. And also these five elements can be seen as absolutely essential to what we do in that we have, we have a place, this planet, which has earth and water and fire and air. And of course, ether is space. So a place to put it all. Uh, without yeah. these elements, the kind of machines that we run in this world don't work. So these five elements are really like umbrellas for other uh, elements to be defined um, mm -hmm. yeah. with it. each one of these is an umbrella that encompasses a whole bunch of stuff and as science is discovering new things that belong to one of these groups, one of these five groups. Correct. And, and because if you see our body, right, the body has 
uh, you know, uh, the skin and the flesh and all those are the earth elements, right? Then mm -hmm. we have water, right? The then you have water. In the body. Yes. Yeah. And then you have fire. That's how the food gets digested. You have the heat in the body. And, and that's how the food gets digested. And of course, air, if air is not there, no one can survive, right? So that's how it is. And any empty space in the body represents ether. So that's Akash. So that's how those, those five elements are. And in fact, it's mentioned that each of those elements are in turn made up of those five elements. Mm -hmm. Like earth also has all these. Oh yeah, it has the other elements within it. Right. So. Yeah, from gross to subtle. Yeah. And in fact. Uh, and in everything in space, this is all explained in Bhagavad Gita. Everything in Akash in the, in the space is manifested through sound, which is the most subtle one of all the elements. Right, and in fact, in, fact, in, Brahm, in, in Srimad Bhagavatam also, it's mentioned that you know how the how those senses came in existence. Like for example, for sound, right? When the ether was uh, ether came in existence, that represented sound, right? It could see the sound, and then you know the touch by uh, yeah. air you could feel, and the form was through fire, right? And the taste was through uh, earth. Yeah. So I think those things are also related to those five elements, like how each came in existence. So we have to understand that this process of the Vedas is perfect. So we analyze it in different ways. We come to different conclusions within the system that the Vedas is presenting and everything is fitting perfectly, perfectly. But this yeah. system of Sankhya is a difficult yoga system, especially in this age. So it's recommended that we take up the the chanting of Hare Krishna, because when we talk about sound, there's two types of sound. There's material sound and there's spiritual sound. And material sound, of course, is found manifested according to physics, if you want to use science, or according to uh, the, the, the Vedanta, it, it's uh, emanating from the Akash. And, uh, but that's all material, it's in this world. So we want to become attached to spiritual sound, which is Shabda Brahman, pure sound. And that, of course, even the Bible says in the beginning, there was the word and the word was God. And we say, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Ram Hare. And, and it's interesting because in the Christian faith, there is the, the um, closing word, Amen, or Amen, which is actually a form of Om. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think we, you know, Gajendra, starting next week, we have a very big chunk of uh, of, uh, of verses. We'll probably take a few, couple weeks at least to knowledge. do it. I it, have it's, some it's, the, this is a very important. It's, it's verses eight through twelve, and That's Prabhupada goes through an extensive description of what these transcendental forms of knowledge are. Okay. So right in the right place. For starting, <laughs> and then next Saturday we next so next Friday is uh, is next day of Diwali. Oh yeah, so maybe we don't do next Friday maybe because on Saturday and Saturday morning we yeah. So, so we'll two weeks from now, correct. But but oh. we on Saturday we'll do the kirtan. Kirtan on Saturday. Don't forget everybody. Eleven to one. So so we'll not have anything together on Friday. But we'll do the kirtan on Saturday, 11 to 1 in the morning. Uh, and I will send out the Zoom link again in the group. Thank you so much, Prabhu. You're taking care of everything. Nice. There are, uh, yeah, and there are going to be kirtan leaders, right? From Rindavan, from New Jersey. So, should be yeah. nice. Even wow. from Hillsborough. Even, even some from Hillsborough and Kerry. <laughs> 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 From New Vrindavan or the Vrindavan? Uh, Vrindavan, sorry. Oh, wow. Gokulendra is going to be chanting. Yeah, go, go, Gokulendra and Prabhu will start from, from Vrindavan. Oh, he's in Vrindavan. Oh, wow. <laughs> Fantastic. So, that'd be nice. That's, he's back to where he started. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, Gokulendra Prabhu has left North Carolina for good? Um, I can't say that for sure. Uh -huh. It's Gokulendra left for good. I can't say sure. Uh, yeah, I think he left quite a while ago from here. 
and he went to Europe and he went back to, to Croatia. And then after that, he went to India and he really wanted to be in Vrindavan. Yeah, he likes India. He was, he was engaged before in this 24 hour kirtan, day in, day out. And uh, he had such a taste for chanting Harinam that oh. he had to go back, yes. But he may come back. Well, then we don't know, but I think he's going to stay there. It. I really doubt it. But yeah. So when you go to Vrindavan, <laughs> you can find him in the temple chanting. Chanting, yes. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Who is this again? Uh, a devotee named Gokulendra. Oh. You've met him, but he's gone now. Just uh, well, uh, make, make sure uh, and keep me in the loop uh, with emails about what happened because my hearing is not good. And I, I will I keep you in the loop, Prabhu. Very good. Definitely. And on WhatsApp group also, we'll put the messages. Yeah, all, well, be, the, the WhatsApp group will have all the messages too. Okay, so we'll hear Damodaras come to you. Jai, sounds great. Shut 
Sunday, yeah, and on Zoom sometime next week, and next yeah. Saturday we'll see everybody on Zoom. All right. And happy Diwali to everyone. Happy next Diwali. Week. Happy Diwali. 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 Have, a good, have a good week. Weekend. Weekend. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare